Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to Snack Time. My name is Ben and in today's video we're going to be taking a look at FileRise. So FileRise is basically a file management solution for Docker, the Docker container, and allows you to quickly upload files, preview them, and kind of share them either publicly or with other users um, in FileRise. And let's go ahead and jump in and I'll show you the product. All right, so when you first go to the website, you're going to be prompted for username and password. Uh, you can also use your um, OAuth as well. Uh, I'm just gonna use a regular old sign in right here. All right, so once you sign into the platform, you're gonna arrive at this screen, and this is where you can upload files. You can create folders, subfolders, whatever. I've created a, a test folder here. It's very easy to do. All you do is just click on this little create folder right here, just give it a, a name. So I'm just going to say test two, and then you can navigate into it. Uh, the navigation is at the top of the page, but if you decide that, hey, I, I would like it on the left or the right, you can drag it over to other uh, sections, which is kind of cool. So if you want to do this, and you have all your files over here and your structure over there for your folders. Uh, that's, that's the way I like it, but you can set it up however you want to. I think that's the only place you can really drag it. Yeah, it's either on the center or it's on the left here. All right, so if we do go into a folder that has some files in it, in this subfolder, I've uploaded a couple of different file types so you can see the preview and what you can do with those files. Uh, all of your actions are over here on the right. However, one cool thing that you can do is you can also right click on any of these files and do additional actions. So you can add tags, uh, you can preview, download, uh, move, selected, copy, delete, all the fun stuff. Let's take a look at the icons on the right here. All right, so we have our download button here. We have the preview. Uh, we have an option to rename, and then we can also share. And I'm going to jump into each one of those, but let's take a look. Uh, obviously we know what download does, but if we click on preview, so it'll show us a preview of the file, and this is an animated GIF, so it's, it's animated it for us. Uh, if we close this out, uh, let's take a look at PNG, same, same kind of thing just going to show us a preview. We can go to uh, next files up here. So check this out. So if I make myself small, we do have a right and a left arrow and a zoom in and zoom out. So if we want to zoom all the way in, we can. Uh, if we want to rotate the file, we can do that as well. We can go to next. And there's just another GIF. I'm going to close this. I did upload a uh, MP4 to see what it would do there. And if you hit preview, it will start playing the video for you. Just kind of cool, kind of cool. And for text files, you can click on the pencil icon and it will come up with a, a text editor that you can add to test test. And you can save that. So there's a test test. That's kind of nifty. Um, so uh, not too much craziness there. Obviously we all know what copy and move and download does. You can also extract zip files. All right, so let's do this. Let's take a look at a couple of the other options we have at the top. Uh, we have where we can uh, uh, trash or restore or delete. So if we go into our trash folder here, any files that we have uh, deleted, we can restore. Uh, we can also take a look at the admin panel. We'll look at that here in a second. Uh, we have our user panel. Uh, we have the, uh, the basically the different ways that you can view files. So let's click on that and you see where it basically opens it up in a whole bunch of, uh, of preview windows. I'm going to click back to the table view and then we have a uh, light mode and we have dark mode. Let's take a look at the admin panel. I'm going to show you around that a little bit. Oh, actually, before we do that, let's do the user panel. So we click on user panel. We can enable uh, the TOTP. So we can use that for signing in. So we can uh, you know, scan it with your favorite uh, MFA app. Uh, let's see, after that, we can change our password and we have API documentation. So if you do uh, become interested in, in using an API with this system, you just click on that link. You can see here, you can see all the different options you have with the API. And that I believe is pulling it all from, yeah, from my uh, actual site here, it's not, navigated me off to a different one. That's all within uh, my my uh, website. Uh, and then we have language. So let's say we have Spanish, French, and German. All right, so let's jump over to admin. 
see what options we have here. We have user management. So if you want to add multiple users to the system, you can do that from here. Uh, the system by default, and I don't know if this is ever going to be changeable, but once you uh, go to the uh, the installation after you, you go through and set up the container, it's going to ask you to set up your initial user. And after that, it's not going to allow you to register. Uh, I don't know if that's going to be something that will be opened up later on. It's not under login options. Uh, so it's quite possible that it just doesn't exist now, but it may exist in the future. I have seen the Reddit post um, on this software and the guy that's developing it has been very responsive. Um, if you do want to add a user, it's very simple. Just click on add user, give it a username and a password and define if it should be an admin or not. User permissions, there's not too much in there. Uh, you can change the permissions for these for the different users you have set up. So let's set up a new user. I set up a Bob user. Let's set up Jill. And let's click on that. OK, so yeah, that's not bad. So we can change the permissions that uh, on a per user basis. That's kind of cool. Uh, this will be blank if you only have one user and that's the admin user. So it doesn't give you the option to uh, lower your privileges, which is probably a good thing. Uh, next up, we have our header settings, and this is just uh, the ability to change that file rise to something else. Uh, so we want to say snack files uh, file repo. We can change that. Uh, we have our login options. Do you want to enable or disable certain authentication methods? A lot of people will disable basic authentication and go for the login form. You can, I think, disable all of them and it may not prompt you at all, which would be really interesting. <laughs> uh, we have uh, web dev uh, options here as well. If you want to use web dev to upload and download files, uh, we have our shared maximum file size. You can increase or decrease this, especially if the, the file size is not sufficient. Uh, it looks like this one is on looks like what 52 megs if I'm reading that right 52 megabytes which is not bad for a single file but you can increase it and last uh, last couple of options we have here are the uh, the way that you can set up your TOTP if you have a different client that you want to use or you want to use um, this uh, open auth uh, you can also set this up here uh, through this method uh, and then lastly, we have our shared link. So if you have generated a share uh, uh, URL, uh, which I can show you here, uh, we'll close this. So if you generate one of these guys uh, and you can specify a date, time, uh, however you know, long it lasts for, you can also make it custom. Uh, but say I have one day and no password. Once you generate that link, it'll give you the URL at the bottom and then uh, you're under admin, you'll have the ability to see those sort of things. So let's see if we, yeah, there it is. And if you want to, you can also uh, delete it. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is that this is not a per user system. Like if I create a Bob user or a Jane user, they're going to have access to the exact same file structure that I have here. So it's not everybody gets their own. This is everybody sharing one. So this is ideal for a company maybe that has, you know, doesn't want to use SharePoint or, or Google, but they want to be able to share files, collaborate and keep all their files in a central location or maybe something for home. Uh, this is a good option for that, but not so much if you want to have everybody with their own independent storage for something like that. You may want to look at something like Nextcloud or OwnCloud. That's uh, the kind of their forte. Uh, this is mostly just giving you an easy way to manage files in a central location. Right, so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to uh, show you how to set this up on your own server using Docker, Portainer, and Nginx Proxy Manager for uh, you know if you in case you want this to be internet facing. Uh, if you don't want it to be internet facing, I'll also walk you through that too to keep it you know on your local uh, LAN. But you'll be given that option when we start taking a look at the compose file. Uh, so why waste time? Let's go ahead and jump into that right now. But we'll start off at the GitHub page. You'll see the URL at the top here. I'll also be posting it in the description down below. But let's go ahead and scroll down. I think uh, that uh, this developer was really cool and put not only uh, demo videos and screenshots, but also gave us our compose file 
all the way at the bottom here. So if we uh, go about mid page, this is what we're going to be looking for our, our Docker compose file. Uh, let's see. So we're going to simply copy this guy and we're going to head over to Portainer. So let's go ahead and click on add stack. I'm going to give it a name, just call it file rise. And I'm going to paste in that Docker Compose file. I'm going to make a couple of changes just to uh, let so it'll match the way that I usually do things. Uh, these are optional. You could always run this as it stands and be just fine. Uh, but let's do this. I want to at least take a look and show you about what all the different uh, lines mean in this Docker Compose file. Never should run something that you're not quite sure what it's doing. Uh, so we're setting up our services, our file rise, and image is going to be pulling from this error 311, and we're going to be pulling the latest uh, image. Uh, the port, so we are going to be exposing to the internet, is going to be 8080. It's going to be forwarding traffic from that port over to our container, which is listening and expecting traffic on port 80. Uh, since I'm going to be running this through Nginx Proxy Manager, I don't want to expose this to the internet. I want all the traffic to go through Nginx. So I'm going to comment this out by just putting a couple of pound or hashtags, depending on your generation. <laughs> all right, for our time zone, it is set to UTC. However, if you do want to set it to your specific time zone, which I definitely encourage, I'll show you how to do that. I'm going to zoom out. And we are going to open a new tab and do a search for the PHP time zones. And we're going to click on this very first link here. We're going to select our time zone. So let's say that we are in Eastern. Uh, let's scroll down and if you look for like uh, America New York, this should be our time zone for Eastern Standard. I'm going to copy that and head on back. And let's zoom back in and we're going to simply replace that. Uh, so our total upload size is 10 gigs. If you want to increase that, you can, just depending on how much space that you have available to you. Uh, for secure, since we are going to be running ours through Nginx Proxy Manager, I'm going to change this to true. However, if you are self-hosting this uh, and, and not running it through Nginx Proxy Manager, you're just keeping it on your local domain or your local network, uh, and you're not uh, commenting out those, I would suggest leaving it as false. Uh, because you're not going to have an SSL cert. Uh, for persistent token key, it just says we want to change this. You can make this whatever random characters that you want to. I suggest maybe a password manager. I'm just going to use um, a file rise is cool. One, two, three, four. There we go. And for the volumes, I'm going to change this as well. I like using the mapped volumes, so I'm not going to use these ones that are going to use this path. I'm not quite sure where it's going to exist. So let's go ahead and remove these. This dot slash dot slash dot slash. And this is going to need us to create three volumes, uh, uploads, users and metadata. And we're going to do that really quick. All right, so we're going to use. Volumes, actually, I'll do that. And we're going to say that we want uploads, users, and metadata. And if we did everything correctly, uh, we should be good to go. We're just putting this down at the bottom because we just need to tell uh, Docker that we need those volumes created. So let's go ahead and hit our deploy. Cool. Yours may take a little bit more time. Uh, mine because I already had it uh, loaded previously, already had the image loaded. Uh, so this is all good to go. If we go to our containers, it looks like it's running, which is nice. What we need to do now is if you did opt for that Nginx proxy manager, we need to make sure Nginx is joined to the same network uh, that file rise is running. Otherwise, we're just not going to be able to talk to each other. Let's go into Nginx. Let's scroll all the way to the bottom. I'm going to move my head out of the way. And I'm going to select the join network and I'm going to select a file rise default and join. And if we scroll to the bottom, we'll see that it is joined to the network and it's picking up an IP address, which is good. All right, now it's time to set up our subdomain. I'm going to be using uh, Namecheap. However, if you have a different DNS provider or, or whatnot, uh, we're simply creating an A record. So however you do that, totally up to you. 
I like Namecheap. It's just a little bit easier to use, and I know exactly where things are. Uh, so I'm going to add a new record. I'm going to select a record. And for this, I'm just going to call it files. And I want to point this to the external IP address of my server, which I have right here. I'm going to paste that, and I'm going to hit Save All Changes. Once that's saved, uh, we just need to keep in mind that the, uh, the uh, full domain is going to be files.senhow.com. Remember, A records are just an easy way for you to create a subdomain. So it's going to be uh, whatever you have specified, dot, and then the rest of your full domain. All right, so let's go over to our Nginx proxy manager. And once we've signed in here, let's create our proxy host. All right, so let's zoom in and let's make our, let's give it our domain, our subdomain, which is our files.sinhow.com. And it needs to know where to send the traffic. I'm going to show you where to find that. If we go under portainer and go under containers. We want to send it to the container name of our file rise. So let's go ahead and copy this guy. And let's go over and we're going to paste that. Uh, something to always check for is spaces. Make sure you don't have any spaces in front or behind the host name. Otherwise, you're going to have a bad time. <laughs> so next up, we have our port. And this is the port that the container is listening on and expecting traffic. If you don't remember what that was, it's easy to find. We'll go back to GitHub and you look right here. Remember I was telling you the 8080 is the internet facing port and the 80 is what the container is expecting to hear traffic on. So we're just going to copy the 80. You can also type it. It's only two characters. And we're going to go back to here and just paste that in. Now one thing I always do is block common exploits and enable WebSocket support and save. Once this is saved, it's almost ready to go. However, we did tell it we wanted it to be secure. So we need to add an SSL search. So we're going to click on these little three dots and go to edit. We're going to go to SSL. We're going to drop this down and request a new certificate. And now we're going to force SSL and we're going to agree to the terms of service. And let's hit save. If you did everything right and it was in the, the right order and your subdomain had enough time to propagate, which usually takes a couple of minutes, especially for a new subdomain, we should get our little window fly away and no error message. If you did get a, a little red error message, like an internal message, there's a couple of things you can check. Make sure that you typed in your subdomain correctly, uh, in both in here and in your uh, DNS provider. Also, make sure that you have port 80443 uh, pointing to the uh, to this Nginx. Uh, that will help it uh, verify that you are who you say you are. All right, well, let's now see if everything has worked. Let's click on files.senhow.com. And there we go. We are all set up. Uh, so this is saying, OK, well, we need to create a new user. So let's do that. Let's give it a username and let's type in a really secure password. And we're going to grant admin access and we save it. It's going to let us now sign in. All right. Well, that is pretty much about it. Feel free to start uploading files, creating folders, subfolders, whatever you want to do. If you do have any sort of questions or comments, please leave them down below. And uh, if this video was helpful for you, I definitely would appreciate a thumbs up. It does help the channel. And I appreciate you spending time with me and look forward to uh, seeing you in the next video. Until then, take care.